Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back. It's the Gunlock. My name is Eric here, joining you today for week three. Nope, week two. Got a little ahead there, entering for the LCK. Still week one for the LPL. The weeks always get a little messy over there. But uh, LCK, we got we got a storyline brewing for the Kwong Dong freaks. And first and foremost, what did they do? To the LCK schedulers, did they did they steal cut in front of them at line at the cafe? Because these guys had to open their season with Hanwha Life T1 and now KT Rolster. Far and away the most brutal schedule to kick off the split. But luckily, we've seen some competitiveness out of them against these solid teams. And today, a single substitution completely changing the landscape of this squad that's right we got two bulls on kdf you got bulldog in the mid lane and just bull subbing in for taeyun uh, in that bot lane for this one and game one against kt this is the ultimate infinite scaling comp with barrel rocking the orange support alongside senna for deft and of course this game did end up going well well into the late game not only do you have these infinite scaling champions but you've also got an infernal soul so you have cinders on top of the endlessly scaling santa support items uh out of or orn items that is out of barrel in the bot lane the orn support is actually absolutely disgusting he was so tanky in this game and deft eventually his range and damage just became so absolutely out of control. Piosik was having fun on the Vi and a lot of this, just driving around on the Rift Herald. The Udir is completely unkillable, also with some ornaments of his own. And these are the fights where you finally see Death coming online and just, oh my God. He was getting, guys, Auto Q was getting most of the opposing Kwangdong players below 50%. So yeah, it's... There's a reason that it's Senna the Menace right now on the, the Rift. Maybe 14.2 is going to change it with the changes to support items, but doesn't matter if she's played in support. 80 carry, I mean, it's the same thing because you're not CSing, but all kinds of different champions we've seen paired alongside her, and definitely the Orn looked pretty damn good for Barrel, and I think he probably patted himself on the back after that one because he said, all right, I played the Orn game into the second game. I'm going to have a little bit of fun, especially because the Senna this time goes the way of the Kwangdong Freak. So Barrel pulls out his patented Huey support in the bot lane, and it's not Senna. And most importantly, it's not Jin. How many times are Mark and I flaming Jin picks across all major regions? But man, Bull subbing in, and he's making it look clean. He was actually doing damage, actually doing damage against an Udyr of all champions he was able to pop off on. Dudu was looking clean on the Rumble, and Kwangdong just working, moving as a unit, especially in these team fights, just straight out, straight up out playing KT Rolster as, uh, again, you see Dudu and Rumble picks on the day. Uh, in the LCK were absolutely terrorizing. There's a reason he's getting nerfed in 14.2 as Bulldog comes in to clean up a final kill. But that was that was basically the game from there. The clean ace out of Kwangdong. They're able to snowball that one. Bull ends up finishing with double digit kills on the Jin and actually doing ludicrous amounts of damage. And it must have felt like his wrists were warmed up after that one. Because as Kwangdong forces that third game, we finally get a match that does not have Senna on the Rift, which means we get some fun bot lanes, like a little Pike Draven out of KT, or the Renata Callista, which I know is pretty meta, but the way Bull's playing Callista, that ain't meta whatsoever, as they get the bailout for Andal, he's gonna survive, Barrel will eventually not be able to chase him out, this bot lane was snowballing to new heights, we're gonna ignore the whiffed flash there, uh, I feel like he wanted to flash forward to get the red, but we'll ignore it. Look at poor little Deft coming back to lane and just getting camped. I mean, 
he should, doesn't even need to burn anything. He tries to ulti, but he's dead before it even happens. And look at this. 10 minutes. More action. A 4-0 and 1 Kalista already for Bull as Def does cash in. But my guy's 1-3 and three already at this point as Bull is just dancing around killing everybody. This is looking like late game Kalista at 10 minutes. He's even going under turret. And if you watch this guy's camera throughout the entire series... He is having a fun time. He's just happy to be on the LCK stage, even though he doesn't get to pull the spears out and get a kill there. BDD was keeping KT in this game with some clean Azir shuffles. The sidestep there, if you saw it on the Corky, had a Bulldog dodging the Pike ulti, but it's a good engage to kind of keep KT alive, but it was still Quang Gun in control, and look at how hard they go to kill your boy Bull on Kalista, but he pops out with the cleanse and is able to dance around bdd can't do much and look it's the corky bulldog the evolved form of bull is here to clean this one up five kills actually no barrel does survive here on the pike four kills going over to bull he doesn't even end up going down another game where he's racking up double digit kills look at those corky missiles with the hex tech soul 50 percent uh, of two different champions health bars uh, it doesn't matter if there's a nice shuffle out of bdd because this game is done and dusted Guangdong freaks able to pick up their first win on the season in stylish fashion against kt roll circle of course were undefeated up to this point spicy picks across the board out of barrel but the story's all about bull in that bot lane i can't imagine that we're going to be seeing Taeyun back in this starting lineup, nor should we, if this is the level that we're going to be getting um, out of Bull, because get double-digit kills uh, in, or nine kills in the second game, ten on that Jin, and just the confidence he was playing in, and it seemed like it leveled up the rest of Kwang Dong because they said, this guy's a psycho, and we got belief in him. You probably haven't heard of Bull before. I can't really say that I had up to this point, but a little bit of research this guy has been in the Challenger League for three years. Since 2020, he's played on five different Challenger squads, so no wonder he was so excited to finally get the call-up to be playing on that big stage. He's been waiting a long time, and he looks like he's absolutely ready for it. Going 1-2 and two for Kwang Dong after that insane schedule is a big win for them. they got to be feeling great and have confidence at an all-time high. Probably not quite as high, as Hanwell Life. Even though they've had a much easier schedule, they continued their absolute onslaught against the bottom of the table in the LCK business as usual for the boys. Hey, look, it's more Senna, this time for BRX, but him him and Execute, head and ex Execute, not be able, I don't know why he's hooking back in to instantly get popped by Viper, but I mean, this is, it's a low kill game, it's not a huge gold lead for Hanwa, Fear X feels like they gotta do something desperate, so they end up opting into an Infernal Soul for Baron trade, and it's a heavily contested trade at that over the Baron, they do eventually end up being able to lock it down, Willer on the Viego secures it with the spike, but they end up losing a couple of guys, and it's didn't really even snowball into very much and uh, peanut on the poppy was a treat to watch there's another corky missile absolutely exploding uh, corky seems like the hard counter for senna just because he can two shot her with turrets as perfect comes in on the udir and this is where fear x or fox completely lose their mind you got people flashing and chasing after an udir have you not been watching the first two weeks of action don't chase the udir they can't even kill him he's distracting two of them the rest of fear x goes down and han will life at uh, doran saying thank you very much thanks for, thanks for chasing me now you're all dead and it goes game one into han will life's pockets and i mean fear x i haven't felt great about them through two series but seeing them match up against the top five team is a bit of a different animal as zeka Picked up the MVP in the first one. He gets Tristana in game two. And this is just a smooth, clean, calm, cool, collected 2v2 out of him and Peanut, who gets another game of tank duty. This time the Maokai. And Doran is going to completely whiff on the equalizer. But it doesn't matter because Hama Life's just that clean. And they're also already up 3k gold at 14 minutes as they scrap around the Rift Herald. Viper gets to have a bit of a field day that he finally flashes over. Closer can't even clean him up by the time this is is there great you killed doran but the rift herald 
four kills goes over to Hanwha Life and that is more than enough to snowball this game out of control as we're gonna see a beautiful, absolutely beautiful uh, takeover of the Rift Herald. Tokyo Drift out of Peanut. He's not actually going baited closer. He was just going to the turret and then he actually forces the ulti out of him. They don't kill him, but some stylish stuff there. And Doran found himself a little bit of redemption. Look at him flashing under turret. In a 1v2, he does not manage to get a kill, but he's able to survive and completely baits the entire Fox lineup into trying to kill him. And look, Udyr still, believe it or not, he doesn't do any damage. Doran survives 14 to two. It ended up being 35 kills to seven in favor of Hanwha Life across the, across the series. Just another incredibly dominant 2-0 out of them. Both MVPs going the way of Zekka, who looks so much more confident uh, in this version of Hanwha Life, probably because he doesn't have to worry about the rest of the squad. Peanut has fit in seamlessly as what I'm going to assume is, you know, the captain, but he's propping up the rest of the boys playing these more supportive junglers, which he has thrived in since his return to Gen G. 3-0, perfect 6-0 game score for Hanwha Life so far, and the gap between the top five and the LCK only continues to get even deeper. LPL action, we got Ninjas in Pajamas making their season debut. And you might say, why are we covering a NIP series? Well, it's the new look Pajamas. And you got your boy Rookie on the squad. Some former OMG members and Shanji and Aki and Fotix on the squad. And this first game between the two was incredibly back and forth. LGD and Nip completely trading blows. Somebody else would win a team fight, then someone else. And finally, this final team fight ends up being somehow a 5 for 0 oh in the favor of NIP. 46 minutes into the game, there's still no Elder Soul or no Dragon Soul. It was 3 to 3. Shanji cleaned stuff up on the Aatrox. Uh, rookie went back and forth with Haichao multiple times on that Rook, uh, Yone Azir matchup, and they swap it for game two. But truly, game two was all about Kasanji in the top lane as Meteor saves his own life, but also saves the Kasantes here. And then finally, you got Aki showing up, and God, Kasante. As much as we talk about Senna, the support items, Kasante is still the most busted champion in the game, and it's not even close. Sanji survives there, and I mean, once a Kasante gets ahead like that, even though the game looks close in terms of gold, uh, the beautiful engage there, or disengage by Hijake going the other way, but the Kasante's too fed. Uh, Rookie didn't have a great day, a great series opener on the Rift, um, but Sanji did. Fotic was pretty clean. LGD were expecting to be a not near the top of the table squad in the LPL, but nonetheless, it's a 2 0 for NIP. Who, you know, if Rookie can get some of the form that he had early on in 2023 with top esports, this could potentially be a team that makes a little bit of a dark horse run in the LPL. Still waiting for a lot of the big boys to debut in China. We haven't seen LNG, we haven't seen. JDG, we haven't seen Weibo. A lot of them get going tomorrow or over the weekend, but still just slowly getting our exposure to these new look squads in the LPL. Lots more action, big boys in the LCK. To close out the week, we'll go through that all and preview what's going on to be the final uh, week of round one in action in the LEC and of course week two in North America. But that is it today for League Unlocked. My name is Eric. You guys are beautiful as always. Stay the way that you are and we will catch you on that flippity flip.